Hello up bags, it's Jade with a Dying Light 2 recap over all the news that's been going on the last couple of weeks with Dying Light. Obviously the release is only a couple of weeks away now and more and more news and info has been generated. Next week we get to see the game running on current gen consoles, apparently it's going to be a big info drop and that was the reply they gave to someone asking whether or not we'd see console gameplay, so hopefully that's going to be the thing. And we got big news literally in the last 24 hours that the game could be 500 hours to fully complete. Now I've got some opinions about that, I want to hear what you guys think, I'm going to delve into that a little bit better because there is a bit of nuance with that and talk about some other stuff as well including the skill tree, parkour moves, what kind of story there will be, how many moves, how many new things are being added to the game and pretty much just recapping everything you need to know about Dying Light in the last few weeks, let's go. So this was the big tweet by the Dying Light Twitter account yesterday, pretty much saying that it would take at least 500 hours to fully complete the game. Though like comparing it from walking from Warsaw to Madrid, and this started a big dialogue and debate about how long is too long of a game. Now to be fair, they did end up following it up a little while later because it had blown up massively. It's about 100% completion rate. Most of the players who are in for story and side quests will be able to complete the game quicker. It will be still a solid experience. And then they followed it up with some more tweets. Story plus side quests, if you're not in a rush, should take you around 70 to 80 hours. But they double down in saying that it will take 500 hours if you want 100% the whole game. So I really hope there isn't any mad trophy, or maybe some people really love there being a trophy on achievement for actually getting that. That's a huge number by any standard. I have to say, I am one of these people that likes a shorter, more compact game with decent story and not too much repetition. But I do understand a lot of you guys that really love open world games like these, you could happily just play them for. But it is a fact that the majority of these types of games do never get completed by the majority of the people. You can easily go and check this by looking at the achievements or the trophies, especially on PlayStation 4 or 5. You used to be able to see how much percentage of people actually have completed it. And when you check final missions for certain games, you'll realize that maybe only 25 to 30% of people actually ever finish things like Assassin's Creed Valhalla because it's simply just too big. As an argument that these games are big and bulky because the developers want you playing the games longer so that hopefully you'll get enticed to carry on buying pretty much microtransactions and skins or any other additional pieces. But as we're getting on, it is now like almost the norm that open world games have to be like 100 hours. Maybe five years ago it was 50 hours. But for me, that is just a bit too long. I certainly won't be trying 100% Dying Light 2. That of course does include replays to get different endings, so I'm not sure if there's like a karma system in Dying Light, whether or not it will mean a good or bad ending, etc. Or if it's going to be certain conversation steps or choices that you'll make towards the end of the game. That would definitely not give that much more hours. But if you've got to replay a whole game or a big chunk of it to get a certain percentage in the karma score, then yeah, I could see that number creeping up to 500 hours pretty easily. So yeah, let me know, is that a great number to have or is it a kind of number that's scaring you a little bit? Let's move on to the gear. So apparently there's going to be 500 unique pieces of gear in the game. Now, I don't think this means weapons, I think it literally means basically armour and clothing. Because obviously with the customisable options you can do to many of the weapons, that number must be more than 500. But yeah, it looks pretty good. Is this meaning we're going to actually be able to have individual pieces? armor and clothing for each body part like chest, arms, feet? Or is this simply zooming in? We don't know fully yet, but that seems like a lot if it is just one suit. That would mean there'd be 500 unique complete suits. So I'm guessing it is going to be individual. We'll be able to mix and match some of these. On top of all that, some bells and whistles that I think are pretty standard now, or should be fully customizable HUD and accessibility options for Dying Light 2. And I'm not going to go through it in too much detail, but they have got system requirements now for Dying Light 2. It looks reasonable for players that aren't going to be playing with ray tracing on, etc. You don't need like the most, most recent up-to-date processor, nor will you need the most recent graphics card. In fact, looking pretty decent at 1050 Ti there for pretty much recommended 30 FPS. Although that is with quality graphics being quite low. If you want it high, full 60 FPS, you're looking at a 2000 graphics card series. But for players that do want ray tracing on at 60 FPS, you're going to need something pretty chunky. The 380-10GB, obviously I've got a 390, so hopefully I might be able to show this off in a pretty nice way. And yes, obviously some decent process alongside that. 
We see some of that ray tracing in a latest trailer as well, showcasing the lighting and stuff. It looks great, it does look fantastic. It doesn't look all just beige and browns, it actually looks like it's got some real colour in it. And just hopefully that frame rate can hold when you've got, you know, maybe hundreds of zombies in the area or about to start attacking you. Especially with the vistas as well. With so many buildings, I know that tanks perform so much as we saw in other games like Cyberpunk and stuff. This seems like a fully realised huge city to explore, bigger than I think I've seen a lot of other games and yeah, so hopefully it can all hold up and it does come good on that. They've delayed it enough times, so hopefully we'll see. And we've got a first look at skills, basically the whole bunch of them, just look how many. Lots of these are going to be focused on basically getting better versions of the same skill. Exception being like the block charge where you can block enemies in front of you to the ground. It's an individual skill by the looks of things. But then you've definitely got some here that are definitely like the third version of it. Parry at the last moment to stagger an enemy. Perform powerful attack in midair with the ground pound. Again, some of these feel like they're a little bit kind of bog standard, but at least it's not too stupid or crazy. Use any obstacle to spring from it and jump further. So that's going to be really good move for people that want to get around quickly and again it looks like it's the third in the set bash through, through obstacles and enemies without stopping and then run alongside horizontal surfaces again some of these feel just pretty bog standard like i would expect them to be unlocked from the start but hey i guess we've got to learn our parkour a little bit console is hugely important to me how games run on it as that's where i usually prefer to play games like these and that's gonna be happening on thursday january the 13th that we'll get a look at the dying to know last one in the series it's going to have loads of gameplay footage as well and the guy that voices the main character Aidan Caldwell he'll be part of that as well and in other news Elden Ring has taken over Dying Light 2 and finishing off with Elden Ring pretty much taking over from Dying Light 2 on the most pre-orders on Steam maybe not so much of a surprise but I've got to say I find it interesting I thought Dying Light would maybe hold its own I did a poll on my community page recently and yeah, Elden Ring was the clear ring winner. Literally surprising to me since most of my subscribers are survival fans. I thought Dying Light 2 would be more up their street, but it came second with Horizon Forbidden West third. So I'm actually going to be covering Horizon Forbidden West and Dying Light 2. I won't be covering Elden Ring, I don't think so, because of the time and just the amount of time I don't have. And that's about it for this recap. If there's any other big news, including that gameplay reveal on Thursday, I'll do my best to try and cover that. I'm also revisiting Dying Light 1 this week in streams, 9 p.m. UK, Monday to Wednesday. I'm gonna revisit the first game, kind of brush off some rust. I know a lot of things have changed, but I still think there'll be a quite a bit that's pretty similar. So yeah, it's worth doing for me anyway, as I haven't played it in absolute years as well. So yeah, let me know what you think about the hours of the game, what you like about the skills, and I'll see you at backs for more Dying Light news and of course guides and gameplay when it releases soon.